Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many as were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide with him a portion among the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sins of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast love and faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. 
Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the sins and the pains of the cross, and so remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion, that we may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hymn 440, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. Verses 1, 4, and 5. Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. With your spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I, in love and faith, may the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death, that I may not perish. Grant that I, your passion, view with repentant grieving. Let me not bring shame to you by unholy living. How could I refuse to shun every sinful pleasure since for me God's only Son suffered without measure. If my sins give me alarm and my conscience grieve me, let your cross my fear disarm Peace of conscience give me. Help me see forgiveness won by your holy passion. If for me he slays his son, God must have compassion. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. 
First they led him to Annas, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl, who kept watch at the door, and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard from me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hands, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own laws. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. 
He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of the preparation of the Passover, it was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, 
they laid Jesus there. This is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hymn 450, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded, verses 1, 3, and 7. O Sacred Head, now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded, with thorns thine holy crown. O sacred head, what glory, what bliss till now was thine. Yet though despised and gory, I joy to call thee mine. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinners gain. My mind was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, and grant to me thy grace. Be thou my consolation, my shield when I must die. Remind me of thy passion when my last hour draws nigh. Mine eyes shall then behold thee, upon thy cross shall dwell. My heart by faith enfold thee, who dieth thus, dies well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold my servant, saith the Lord. That is how the Lord thinks of his Messiah, his anointed one, his Christ, my servant. And how does the servant serve the Lord? What does the servant do? He humbles himself and becomes obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. For to be a servant is to be selfless. The servant is not interested in his own interests, but in the interests of his master. You are the interest of Jesus' master. God the Father loves you, and he sent his servant son to lay down his life to redeem you, to win you back from your sin and its just wage, death. God the Father loves you, and he loves his servant son also, Therefore, the sacrifice of his servant son is the father's sacrifice as well. The father's servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted, both in his crucifixion and death and in his resurrection and life. For this is the theology of the cross that God has chosen what is foolish in this world to shame the wise, that God has chosen what is weak in this world to shame the strong, what is low and despised in this world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. From the lowly seed comes the majestic tree, but not without the destruction of the seed. If a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. 
But if it dies, it bears much fruit. This is the theology of the cross, which is folly to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved, it is the power of God. When they gazed upon Jesus, they saw only weakness and lowliness. They despised him. They considered him nothing. Isn't this the carpenter's son from backwater Nazareth? Do we not know his origin, his birth, his parents? He is nothing. We know him. We have no use for him. And when the Lord struck and smote and afflicted Jesus, they thought that he was just getting his just deserts. Yet it was our griefs and our sorrows that Jesus carried. It was for our transgressions that he was wounded. It was for our iniquities that he was crushed. By his chastisements and stripes are we healed and find our peace with God. This was the Lord's will for his suffering servant, whom he loves because he loves you. Jesus is the Lord's suffering servant. He served his Lord by laying down his life for you. It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You are his offspring. Jesus died that you might prosper. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That is, for you. Jesus paid the debt that you owed. He suffered the wrath that was justly yours. He was obedient to the law of the Lord in perfect love, fulfilling it for you and giving you the credit. Truly, the gospel message of Good Friday is this word of Jesus from the cross. To tell us that. It is finished. It is fulfilled. It is complete. The old has passed and the new has come. Forgiveness, salvation, and everlasting life. Jesus is the Lord's suffering servant. And you are the Lord's servant too. Jesus' new commandment to you on Holy Thursday was to love one another as he has loved you. But it was Jesus' death on Good Friday that gives you the freedom to do that, the freedom to love as you have been loved, not out of fear or coercion of the law. Before Jesus' death, the law loomed over you like a cruel, unloving, and merciless taskmaster. It demanded perfection of you, and you were literally damned before you started, before you even tried to keep it and do it. But now Jesus has tetelestai. Jesus has fulfilled the law's demands for you in his perfect and holy obedience and in his suffering and death upon the cross. Tetelestai. It is finished. It is fulfilled for you. The old has been fulfilled and has been made new. That means that you, you have been made new as well. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. The change that has been wrought in you is servanthood. It is love. There is a change in you in which you view your fellow man, be he your brother, your neighbor, your friend, or even your enemy. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. We regard no one according to the flesh because our flesh has been redeemed in Jesus Christ, who died in the flesh, fulfilling the law's demands for us all. Christ has died for all, therefore all have died. So also Christ has been raised for all, that all may live in him. Now there is a world of advice and exhortation out there, making demands upon you as to how you should live and what you should do, how you should talk and dress and eat and raise your families, how you should vote, and every other aspect of your life. Not all of those things are bad in and of themselves, but what do the scriptures say? What does your Lord Jesus say? A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, 
Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And what does Paul say? That the love of Christ controls us. Because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Jesus died to set you free from the threatening coercion of the law, that you might no longer live for yourself, but to Christ and to your neighbor. The suffering servant Jesus served and suffered that you might become the Lord's servant in him. He has even given you this ministry, this service, this ministry of reconciliation. And what does this mean? It means that as Christ has reconciled us to himself, so now does he send you as his ambassadors to implore others to be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. Jesus died so that you might live. The life you live is his life. Jesus lives for you and with you and through you to the glory of our Father. To tell us die, it is finished. All that was necessary to make you right with God, all that was necessary to redeem you from sin and death, all that was necessary to rescue from slavery and condemnation under the law is finished, complete, fulfilled in Jesus' death on Good Friday. Jesus took all of that upon himself, and he died for you, as you, and was buried. However, he did not remain in the tomb, but he rose from the dead on the third day just as he had said. To remain in sin and the worldly, fleshly, and material desires, pleasures, and pursuits is to remain in death and the tomb. It's to return to a stinking, rotting, filthy corpse. But Jesus has died and has been raised that you might live for him and as him. And while this new life is not always easy, Jesus promises to be with you through it all, so that when you give to others, you give with his gifts. When you forgive others, you forgive with his forgiveness. And when you love others, you love with his love. You are not the same. In Christ, you have been reconciled with God. Therefore, be reconciled with your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your enemy. You are a new creation in Christ. And so also your brother, your sister, your neighbor, and your enemy. You are blessed to be a blessing. And that is why we call this day good. Jesus' death is for you and as you. And Jesus' resurrection is for you and as you. In Christ, you are a new creation. Glory be to God alone. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hymn 451, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. Tis the Christ by man rejected, yes, my soul, tis he, tis he. Tis the long-expected prophet, David's son, yet David's Lord. Proofs I see sufficient of it, tis the true and faithful word. Here we have a firm foundation, here the refuge of the lost. 
Christ, the rock of our salvation, is the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrifice to cancel guilt. None shall ever be confounded who on him their hope have built. Let us pray. O Christ, Lamb of God, slain for the sin of the whole world, with penitent heart I come to your cross, pleading for mercy and forgiveness. My sins, and they are many, have added to the burden of your suffering and have nailed you to the accursed tree. For me, you tasted the agony of the utter darkness that I might not perish but have everlasting life. Have mercy upon me. O Christ, Lamb of God, embrace me with your love and forgive me all my sins. Your death brings healing to my soul, peace to my mind, cleansing to my heart. If you would mark iniquity, I could not come. For my hands are unclean, my lips are sullied, and my heart is blackened by sin. But beholding you bleeding, despised, forsaken, dying, pierced, I come to be cleansed and forgiven. O Christ, Lamb of God, Grant that I may hate sin and wickedness more and more as I behold you in your great agony. My grateful heart today finds hope in your words, comfort in your promises, and salvation in your finished work on the cross, by which you have overcome sin, Satan, and death. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, Leave us not to bitter death, O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did
ancient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O my people, Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? O oh, my people, holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Thy peace be with us, O Jesus, O adore you, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. 
or behold by the wood of your cross. Joy has come into all the world. God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us and have mercy upon us. We adore you, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, by the wood of your cross, joy has come into all the world. Let us pray. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessings may be upon your people who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The seven last words of Christ our Lord. The first word, Father, forgive them. O Lord, deal not with us after our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, because you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we turn from our evil away and live, we implore you graciously to turn from us those punishments which we, by our sins, have deserved, and to grant us grace always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And when they came to the place that is called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. All darkest woe, tears overflow. As her so sad a wonder, God the Father's only Son, now is buried yonder. The second word, today you will be with me. Help us, God of our salvation, to the glory of your name. Deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Almighty and everlasting God, since you govern and sanctify the whole Christian church by your Holy Spirit, hear our prayers for all its members and mercifully grant that by your grace we may serve you in true faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. O oh, sorrow, dread, our God is dead. Upon the cross extended, there his love enlivened us as his life was ended. The third word, here is your mother. Humbly we adore you, O Christ, and we proclaim your saving love. By your holy cross and precious blood, you have redeemed the world. O God, merciful Father, because you despise not the sighing of a contrite heart, nor the desire of the sorrowful, 
Mercifully assist our prayers, which we make before you in all our troubles and adversities as they come upon us, and graciously hear us, so that those evils which the craft and subtlety of the devil or people work against us may by your good guidance be brought to naught, that we, your servants, being hurt by no afflictions, may evermore give thanks to you and your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. O child of woe, who struck the blow that killed our gracious master, it was I thy conscience cries, I have wrought disaster. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will glorify me. Spare us, O Lord, and mercifully forgive us our sins. And though by our continual transgressions we have merited your punishments, be gracious to us, and grant that all these evils which we have deserved may be turned from us and overruled to our everlasting good. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Thy bridegroom dead, God's lamb has bled upon thy sin forever, pouring out his sinless self in this vast endeavor. The fifth word, I thirst. God forbid that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, who hates nothing which you have made, and forgives the sins of all who are penitent, create in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Such innocence is countenance, a fount of faith undying, worlds on worlds cannot contain, grief at him here dying. The sixth word, it is finished. O Lord, enter not into judgment with your servants, for in your sight shall no person living be justified. Almighty God, since you know that we are set in the midst of so many and great dangers, 
that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. O Virgin Son, what thou hast won is far beyond all telling. How our God detested died, hell and devil fell in. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us with your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction comes and temptation comes upon us the night of fear and despair when death shall come. Abide with us and with all the faithful through time and eternity. Amen. It was now about the sixth hour and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus called out with a loud voice saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Oh, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed thy life for lifeless mortals. Be my life in death and bring me to heaven's portals. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, who has not spared your only Son, but delivered him up for us all, that he might bear our sins upon the cross, grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 